Welcome to ProBuild 360 TV. Welcome to the on-site podcast. Hugh Franklin, please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Hugh, uh, head of Aero Barrier UK. Uh, we are an air tightness company specialising in measuring and verifying low energy builds across the UK, both commercial and domestic. Brilliant. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about the uh, history of how Aero Barrier started in the US and Canada and the story of how it was brought across? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were talking about all the current building regulations and all of the homes that are being assessed and lived in at the moment, the new eco homes that are being trialled. And essentially, that's how Aero Barrier was developed. In the, over the last 30 years, um, the Aero Barrier team or the Aero Seal team in the United States basically came up with this system at the University of California, Davis, about trying to reduce leakage through yeah. air conditioning pipes. Because again, in hot countries, it's not trying to keep the heat in like we have to, it's trying to keep the cold in and the heat yeah. out. Yeah. And ventilation systems, I'm sure we'll talk about as well, as well as um, building envelopes leak, and that's where you get that unwanted heat transfer. And essentially, that's how it was developed, as a university project. Yeah. Exactly the same process as the... Energy House 2.0, which has just been built by the University of Salford, okay, which is basically a house built inside of a factory. And yep. they do a lot of weather monitoring, fill it with snow, fill it with heat, all this stuff to see how the buildings yep. perform. That's exactly what they did in the United States. Right. That's how the product was developed. And basically, over the last 20 odd years, um, Aero Seal, which is this duct ceiling, and then its sister, Aero Barrier, yep. was also developed for building envelopes. And that's what we do here. Brilliant. Um, Euro Seal is that has that been brought over as well? So yeah, we don't, that, or do we not we, need it? We, as much? Well, the interesting again, we don't run air conditioning or pipe work to the mm. exact same yeah, to yeah. the same extent as the um, as the North Americans do. However, it is here, and equally there are there are a number of different opportunities as well for sealing things. So you know, natural gas pipelines, water pipelines, yeah. everything that where a product is carried either through a tube or into a building. Yeah. Also leaks. I mean, we hear that all the time from the yeah. water companies at the moment. That's right. Ten percent, thirty percent leakage. Yeah. What happens if we could have that at zero? Yeah. And so that's sort of where the the concept of, of of atomized sealing mist coating comes in, and that's how the product is really atomized sealing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's uh, that's a great way to explain what aero barrier is. Yeah. Um, well, I th I thought that we'd go through uh, the explainer video yeah. um, and ask yeah, yeah. you to uh, talk it through. Fantastic. Because I think that the viewers and listeners. Um, won't get a sense of what we're talking about without the context of what the product is that we're talking about. Exactly the same so for me. Yeah. I'm going to get this. So basically what we've got here is yeah. is the building. Um, and this can be a domestic or commercial building. Here yeah. we see a single story as well as multi-story. Yeah. And essentially it's an air test on steroids. That's the best way of explaining what we're doing here. Yeah. What they're doing is they're currently covering unintentional areas of leakage. So these are areas like ducts and um, fireplaces, areas we don't want the air barrier to go to and everything else there. Mm -hmm. Then these modular sealing stations are brought into the building. These are the units that actually push the sealant throughout and we put them all around in kind of a, an organized pattern. Yeah. This is now the blower door setup. This is how you pressurize a building. That's like, that's traditional. We all, we've always done that. This is how it's yeah. done. This is the industry standard way. Yeah. There are multiple ways of doing it, but a consistent pressurization is, is typical for yeah. air testing in 90% yeah. of cases at the moment. And then what we do is we follow the usual procedures with a little bit of a twist. Yeah. So pressurizing the building, that's pumping it up like a balloon. Yeah. That means that if you've got a you know a puncture in a tire or something, air is leaking out of all those nooks and crannies. Yeah. And all of this is communicated back to the main, basically main computer unit that is controlling the speed of the fan. Then when it's up to hundred Pascals, which is twice the pressure of standard air testing kind of control levels, yeah. we create this mist inside the building. Yeah. This is the atomized low VOC sealant that we use, it's waterborne. And that mist essentially is pulled or sucked towards any nooks and crannies and leakage in the building. Because it's high pressure inside, yeah. low pressure outside. Basically, you know, firing out and, and plugging up. And the way it works, it's not an expanding sealant. What it does is it accumulates across gaps. So it's sticky rather than expanding. Exactly. So yeah. it's not an expanding. There's no expansion or, or you know, off-gassing it from the product. And what we do is we track the sealing minute by minute as the building gets tighter and tighter. And you yeah. can see here, as the sealant accumulates around something like a back box, yeah. common area of leakage, 
under, you know, as it says, sill plates um, and soles versus, you know, where the masonry might be joining an MMC build. Yeah. All those areas, classic here. And this is really not service, bad. Service penetration. Yeah, because you've got to make a, you've got to make a 25 mil hole to fit a 22 mil of pipe. Course, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where, where you, all your, all this leakage starts adding up. And we basically track it down and you tell the computer where, how airtight you want to get. Yeah. And you can turn off the system at any point throughout that process. So let's say the builder asks for a three. Yeah. Um, and this is all mentioned in That's ACH. quite typical, yeah. Yeah, very typical. And the, the other thing we're talking about here is in this build, they've got ventilation systems in. Yes. So a big question for builders is how do I guarantee measurable, repeatable results? Yeah. Because if you've got to aim with new building regulations between having uncontrolled or natural ventilation yeah. versus mechanical ventilation, yeah. you need to shoot that gap quite tightly. And that's essentially what we try and, you know, give builders as a guaranteed result there. Yeah. So we'd be typically talking, because um, no one really wants a zero air changes per hour, um, unless um, there must be some circumstances. Passive house, is that so zero? Passive house is 0. 0.6. So 0. that's 6. an air change once every 90 minutes or so. Yeah. The only instances where we've gone through how having um, a very, very, like a zero, or yeah. as close to zero as possible, are highly specialist. So um, ridiculously things like um, records, um, warehouses, and museum storage. Right. So let's say you've got a fire, and you've got ancient books that you need to look after. Yes. They need to be able to fill that building with nitrogen and yeah. purge the fire. And you can't have that nitrogen leaking. Yeah. So they need that to be as airtight as possible. That so it's speci specialist, um, specialist and clinical uh, applications. Clean rooms, pharmaceuticals, um, nuclear power stations. We've, Fantastic. Yeah, research facilities like that. It's been really fun. Yeah. Um, so you kind of get you get a really wide variety of stuff. And that's on the, we're talking 0 0.02, 0 0.05. Yeah. Passive house, we've done a number with sub 0 0.6. Yeah. We also have a number of projects which want to get to AECB standards, which is like that low carbon retrofit. Yeah. Um, or low carbon generally, which is sub one or sub 1.5 ACH. Um, there's obviously, we, um, and then you get the building regulations compliance, which is below in air permeability. And I do apologize. There are two, no, me quite, two no, metrics, no, um, not which don't con convert pound for pound, but if we, you know, around a five in air permeability for building regs compliance, yeah. around a three for those with ventilation systems. So that is where kind of the numbers start to yeah. drop down. And we typically see in builds that getting a three to a five is very much part of the course in a lot of instances. About a three to a five, yeah. Three to a five is where a lot of builds are kind of coming in now on the self-builder side. Um, the... Average data logged from air tests, which is now a legal requirement for building control sign off in new build circumstances. Yeah. The average result at the moment is about a 4.5. Now, that is not going to get us to future home standard. If we want to have net zero low energy, 2025 homes is allegedly when it's coming. Right. Um, that's future home standard then. I mean, for example, the 2021 regs are only being implemented, it were enforced actively since 2023, June mm -hmm. this year. Obviously, there were some other extenuating circumstances, but yeah. um, essentially, 2025 is we are looking for those regs to really take building to the next level. Yeah. Because if they hold building compliance at five, no one's going to make less drafty buildings. That needs to come down, and we start adding ventilation systems in for energy recovery and systems like that. So that's kind of where we see the airtightness movement yeah. going. I mean, it's it's such a interesting piece of innovation because. So at the at the House Builders Association, we promote fabric first. Mm -hmm. When it comes to sustainability, we say fabric first, rather than um, uh, push us unnecessarily quickly towards sustainable energy systems. Mm -hmm. Um, that our technology might not be quite there, needs a little bit more time to refine it and um and test and try all these things. Mm -hmm. Um, in the meantime. Fabric first, get that air tightness to where it needs to be, um, and have quality bit, uh, build details. Hundred percent. My principle is what is better. Well, I, I, what is better, a kilowatt generated in clean energy or, or a kilowatt saved? Love it. Has to be a kilowatt saved because yeah. we have a finite amount of resources, yeah. and no matter how you plow those resources into different things, the best thing we can do 
is reduce what we use or yeah. reduce the wastage. Yeah, that's it's, it. it's the old well, That's exactly what Aero Barrier does is reduce waste. Hugely. You couldn't state it any clearer. I mean, it, it, as as a as an air tightness tool, mm. it's an auto. It's the it's the next step from what I used to do with some of the national house builders as as a site manager. Mm-hmm. When you get in, you know, ten houses in a row to, having their air tightness done, mm-hmm. which is send three labourers with mastic guns mm-hmm. and expandable foam running around like headless chickens trying to yeah. plug up the holes. The amount of wastage, um, you know, in the aerosol cans and the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the plastics and the, all that sort of stuff, it was just uh, sad to see, really. And let's be honest, also labour. Let's yeah, be, and you know, labor, specialist yeah, labour, right. people who can... The key is, is with, with all labour, and, and talking about automation and building and everything at the moment, is make the jobs that people do, specialist, yeah. feel worthwhile and also something to be proud of yeah you don't want it to be like school sports day with 10 people lined up outside the house going in running around that's going what mad. it was like it's insane and it's and it's so stressful as you say for site managers it's for terrible. builders it's really hard and so you know we've come off at projects very very recently exactly the same when they go we have our air test coming on thursday and we just don't know what to do yeah and that's where we're trying to help them even get close to where they need to be in terms of eco-friendly yeah. homes moving forwards because that's what clients want and that's yeah. honestly what what no, young families in an energy crisis also deserve yeah so maybe, yeah that's right yeah so if we can the more we can do that the better yeah there's um there's something uh something to be proud of when you see like you say the, the well so you've got the materials mm-hmm. that are being saved because the uh the system only uses well how do you phrase it it only uses what it needs right absolutely so the way that it basically installs as we saw in the video there you've got these little modular stations that move around the building yeah each one of those tracks essentially the sealant volume in yeah. that particular room. Yeah. So let's say you've got um, a house uh, for ease with two rooms identically sized, yeah. just for maths. Um, and let's say they're trying to hit an air tightness of three. Yeah. Now, if one of those rooms is leaking at two air changes an hour, yeah. and one is leaking at four air changes an hour, yeah. the net result is a three because you've got six got divided by two. Yeah. So the net result for that building is a three. And you go, great, we've got a three. What you've actually got is one room leaking too much yeah. and one room leaking too little. So the way that the modular systems work is they basically push the same volume of 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 air of mist coat into the building. Yeah. And then if that room is really, really airtight, the mist isn't leaking and escaping anywhere. Yeah. Because it's airtight. And so the system turns itself off in that room. Oh, I didn't realise that. And so what it means is you can put ceiling station A in the kitchen, ceiling yeah. station B in the bathroom, C in the master bedroom, B, uh, D in, you know, the bathroom, second bedroom, whatever it might be. And if you've got those type rated homes or those those traditional, you know, same sort of designs of homes yeah. and with same people working on each one, you can basically replicate where those ceiling stations sit in each building yeah. and you can track which rooms they're leaking more than others so you can help improve processes outside of Aero Barrier as well. So we can say, ah, oh, right. So you can feed that back to the to the builders in terms of productivity and stuff. So guys, you are doing really, honestly, so too I'd, good a job in I'd, the kitchens. I'd, I'd, yeah, and I'd imagine the bathrooms are potentially mm. somewhere where you get a lot of leakage. Yeah, there's a lot of penetrations in bathrooms. You've yeah. got you've got hot, you've water coming in. You've got soil. So leaving. much innuendo happening. I right do apologize. Yeah, out of, <laughs> out of context, like 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 yeah. um, like everything else. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's I saw I saw one on the on the uh, on the motorway flyover about you know erecting sheds. Yeah, and I was like, oh god, they must make a killing off this. Yeah, um, but uh, they, um, yeah, you get you get all of these all of these punctures through the building. Yeah. that are leaking, and it's yeah. not because people aren't doing their jobs right. It's because buildings are designed to be airtight. Now, yeah, they are not designed to have drafts going through them. They are designed to have a control and a measurability in where your vapour and yeah. where your moisture is moving, which yeah. is why you get these horror stories of black mould, yeah. of everything that way. All of that comes down to air tightness yeah. because 90% or 98% of all water movement through a building yeah. doesn't come through rising damp or rain or gutters. It's in the air. It's through air. Yeah. And that is it. If you can control air movement, you can control vapour movement. And that is how you solve you know, damp housing. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So why don't we live up to the name of the podcast since <laughs> we are the on-site podcast? Let's head to site um, to go and see Aero Barrier in action um, at one of our special projects. Absolutely, let's do it. Brilliant.
Hi everybody, we're back at the Warlane project. As promised, we've got something very special to show you today. It's a system that's only been in the UK for about a year. It's designed to achieve a particular level of air tightness on the property, and that's gonna reduce heating bills and generally optimize the energy performance of the property. Um, so we've got the generator and the compressor and the air blower set up. The guys are prepping inside, they're covering some of the surfaces and closing some of the larger openings. So let's go and have a look what they're up to. So here we are with Hugh Franklin from Aerobarrier. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the system to educate yourselves, builders, homeowners, and so on. So Hugh, this can be done at any stage from uh, pre-plaster to retrofit. Absolutely, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve or how the build yeah. is designed. So basically Aerobarrier can be applied in any form of UK standard housing stock, mm -hmm. timber frame, masonry, steel frame in some mm -hmm. cases, concrete, ICF we've done. The key for us really is when, where are you choosing your air tightness layer to be? So a family that's in, in their property, lived in there for 20 years, but it's uh, either poorly built or uh, you know um, just tired and yeah, the um, worst for wear, air, yeah. got air leakage, yeah. um, you can prep the house and do it then? Absolutely. The main difference, as you can see here, is horizontal surfaces. So in a new build construction or a deep retrofit as this yeah. is, we're able to come in at a construction stage. Yeah. When you've got finished horizontal surfaces, you really need to make sure they're prepped up. Yeah. So basically, and that's something the homeowners can do, mm -hmm. and we will then charge exactly the same rate we charge all of our contractors as well. Right. So we're gonna have a little bit of a look at the prep work as this project is somewhat advanced in its stage of development. There are things, some horizontal surfaces and stuff that needs covering. Can you tell us a little bit about it, please? Absolutely. So we've been through a bit about horizontal and verticals um, in terms of surfaces. Uh, Aerobarrier doesn't stick to vertical surfaces at all. So just here, you know, you've got some tile, you've got some finishes. It won't touch these at all. However, any finished horizontal surfaces you can yeah. see here, you know, the bath itself yeah. needs to be covered up. The bath panel is absolutely fine. Yeah. Same with tiling when you finish floors down. We literally put some plastic covering over these and it's absolutely fine to go. Same on window boards or any items like that as well. Perfect. So we're outside now, everything's prepared inside. The blower is set up, the generator's ready to go. We're gonna fire the system up. We're gonna get an initial reading. Hugh's uh, putting in all the details of the property uh, to the laptop. We'll get an initial reading. Then we uh, have a little discussion about what we want to achieve. So Hugh. Absolutely, yeah. Um, about three to five air changes. Absolutely, for a property of this age and the design of it, we're looking at between a three and a five. Um, traditionally, I've done houses this age that start at 15 or a 20. The buildings were designed differently 100, 200 years ago with modern stuff going on into yeah. this. We're looking between a three and a five. Just Brilliant, and we'll have an optimized, energy efficient property. Yeah, yeah. So we'll let the process continue. We'll get the data sent over and we'll review it remotely and uh, we'll um, have a chat about it later. So hi, hi Hugh, how are you? Very well, thank you, how are you? Wonderful, thank you. So we're going to have a conversation today about the uh, project in Harborn where the aero barrier system has been applied and we're going to look at some of the results, what we've achieved and what that means for the property, yeah? Absolutely. So what I'll do Perfect. now is I'll yeah. pull up this. So here we are. Here's your envelope Marvelous. ceiling report. Basically, the system will take a pre-seal air tightness reading, uh, in which case this one came out at 5.34, um, 5.43 air changes per hour. And yeah. so you can see here at the start, we were, you know, well, 734. And then as the seal went on, it was able to drive the value down here, um, right the way down to 2.81 ACH or 380, which is, you know, around this number here. So we take and a reading. And what's that in? That's in air changes per hour? Air changes per hour is 5.43 ah. down to 2.81. So, oh, right. So broadly speaking, this is if you were to take an aero barrier seal, we would discuss the value you're looking for in advance. For yep. yourself, it was about a three. Yeah. So you know, so we got with, just so so we got just below three at two point eight one. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that's really, really, really high yeah. performance. Oh, absolutely. It's gonna that's gonna be low uh, bills, um, yeah. low energy usage. Yeah. Um, 
so in in the winter when it's really cold outside you're not losing heat through the fabric of the building absolutely yeah. we've had clients that came currently on site right now in completed projects where that number started about a nine or a ten yeah and we've driven that down to between that three and a five band again for them yeah and literally the day after they said i was sitting inside with my kids and it was less drafty like you could feel the warmth staying in and that was the start of january where we had that cold weather i said uh, that you're going to need a bulletproof vest because you're going to be upsetting a lot of people in the mastic industry and the <laughs> expandable <laughs> foam yeah we, we, get, we get some security detail bud oh mate it's one of those ones where you get it when um, when people ask the question and you even little old us um saying stuff and then people, if, when people respond with such massive emotion, you yeah. know that you're upset in the Apple car. Yeah. And um, and I, we were today, we did a future of air tightness talk with the air tightness community, the air tightness testing and measuring association. And Barry, who runs that that particular gaff, said, yeah. you know, yeah, this his his, his favourite quote from the day was, yeah, some some writer said, you know, once a new technology rolls over you, if you're not part of the steamroller, you're part of the road. And I <laughs> feel like that's where our industry is moving. You know, that's right. That's looking, right. It's, yeah, it's great, and it's exactly where it's all going. So uh, we're seeing an awful lot of, of people getting very involved and interested in, in everything moving forward. So, yeah, it's a good place to be. Good. Wonderful. Hugh, thank you for your time, bud. No, it's been an absolute pleasure, Michael. You take Speak care. Speak to you soon, my friend. God bless. Yeah. Bye. Cheers.